So we're asked to determine the maximum bending stress in the 40 mm diameter shaft, which is subjected to the concentrated forces. The sleeve bearings at A and B support only vertical forces. So I've written out the main equation that we're going to need to apply, which is the one for the maximum bending stress that we're asked to calculate. So what we need to figure out is the maximum moment, which we'll get from a bending moment diagram, and then Y max and I, which are going to come from looking at the cross section. So I'm going to start with looking for the maximum moment, and that's going to mean that we need to draw a free body diagram in order to calculate the reactions at A and B. So drawing that in, we've got our force of 1800 newtons and our force of 1350 newtons on the end. We're told that A and B, these bearings, are only able to support vertical reactions or vertical forces. So that means there's only going to be a vertical reaction for them. There's going to be no horizontal component. So essentially they're like a roller joint where the shaft would be able to slide back and forth along this direction, but it's restricted in moving up and down. So let me just put the dimensions on this diagram as well. I'm going to convert them into meters so that when we look at moments, um, we'll be using the, the meter unit for that as well. Cool. So we need to go ahead and find A, Y and B, Y. I'm going to use our equilibrium equations and I'm going to start by summing moments about point A, which is this one on the end. So A, Y acts through it, therefore it's not in the equation. We then have 1800 newtons acting at a distance in here of 0.3 and it's going to be clockwise. We've then got BY acting at the distance in here which is a total of 0.75. This is going to be anti-clockwise, so positive. We've then got 1350 acting at the full length of this beam which corresponds to 1.125 meters and this is going to try and rotate clockwise so it's negative. So BY comes out to be 2745 newtons. So now we just need to go and find AY, which we can get most easily by summing forces in the Y direction. So AY is up, 1800 down, 2745 up, and three, uh, 1350 down. So it corresponds to your reaction at A being 405 newtons. Okay, so now we're ready to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams. So we'll start with the shear force one, and all my forces are in newtons, so my diagram is going to be in newtons. So starting at the beginning at zero, we're immediately pushed upwards 405 nothing happens through here so it's going to remain steady and we're then pushed down 1800 so this is going to take us all the way down to be negative 1395 again nothing's happening through here so we remain constant and then we're pushed up 2745 so that's going to take us all the way back up again um, it corresponds to 1350 Nothing happens again through here, and then finally we're pushed down 1350, so that takes us back to zero. So that becomes our shear force diagram. Now really we're not interested in the shear force, it's just a tool for us to be able to now get the bending diagram. And the units for us are going to be in newton meters, since our forces are in newtons, and I've now drawn all of our dimensions in meters. So bending moment diagrams depend on couples, which we don't have, so we can ignore that, and also areas in the shear force diagram. We're essentially taking the integral here by looking at the areas under the curve. So starting with uh, this part in here, it's on the positive side of the shear force diagram, so we would be, expect it to take us upwards on the bending moment diagram. Now this is flat on the shear force diagram, which would mean that we're going to get a diagonal on the bending moment diagram. So it goes upwards, and at this point here, we need to add up all of the area that we've covered so far. So it's going to be the 405 for the height of the rectangle, multiplied by the width of it, which corresponds to the 0.3 meters. So this ends up being 1 to 1.5, um, again units are newton meters. 
So now we can look at this part of our diagram. It's on the negative side, so we would expect it to pull us back downwards. And we can work out how far. So it's going to be where we started, which was 1 to 1.5. Uh, minus the area in here, which is 1345 times this width. It's not very to scale. Maybe I should fix that a little bit. Here we go. So this distance in here should be the one, um, sorry, 0 0.45. And it ends up being that you have a moment in here of negative 506.25. So finally, the only bit left um, is this part of our area in here. Again, it's on the positive side, so it should take us back up. And because it's the only thing left, it really should take us back to zero. But you can check. It's where you started, which is negative 506.25, plus the area in here, which corresponds to 1350 times the width of it, which is the 0 0.375. So fingers crossed, if you type that in, it's going to take you back to zero, and it does. So the reason we've drawn this diagram is because we want to know the maximum moment that we can get in our beam. And at that, we want the absolute value of it, so the positive version. So the biggest number that we can possibly get is 506.25. So that becomes our absolute maximum um, bending moment, and the units are in Newton meters. So that's that part complete. If we scroll back up, all we need now is Y max and I, and we know that we have a cross section that is circular, um, and has a diameter of 40 millimeters. So let's go down and deal with this. This is our cross section, 40 millimeters. So we know that our neutral axis goes through, or our neutral plane, sorry, goes through the centroid of our shape. So the centroid of a circle sits at the center of the circle, and if you wrap around your neutral plane, it should um, pass through it like so. Now, the maximum distance that we can get away from this, um, this axis here, if we go upwards, it's going to be half of this, so 20 millimeters. And if we go downwards, it's going to be exactly the same amount since the center of a circle sits halfway from the top and the bottom. So Y max in here is going to have to be 20 millimeters. And of course, we take the positive version, so positive 20 millimeters. So that's easy. Now what we need is the I value that corresponds to this cross section um, and looking at about this axis. Again, you can look this up in tables for a circle. It's pi on four R to the four, where R is the radius of your circle. So pi on four, our radius is 20. So 20 to the fourth. And we end up with an I value for the circle of one, two, five, six, six, four the units are millimeters to the fourth. So finally, now we have all the pieces to substitute back into our equation for bending stress. So we said that stress at a maximum is M max, Y max on I. So the maximum moment that we worked out was this, 506.25. We need to multiply it by the maximum value that we can get for the distance, which is 20 millimeters. I'm going to convert this to meters, so 10 to the negative 3. And for I, we've got this. It's currently in millimeters to the fourth. So let's convert that as well. So to go from millimeters to meters, it's 10 to the negative 3. And then we need to um, raise the unit to the fourth, so we need to raise the conversion to the fourth as well. So this here is going to come out in base units since everything was converted. So it's about 8.06 by 10 to the 7 pascals. And then because it's such a large number, if you want, you can convert it. So if I go to megapascals, divide by 10 to the power of 6, which makes it 80.6, and units were megapascals. So that's the final answer that the question was looking for. So that's all there is, and I'll see you in another video.